Good morning. We're so glad you're here. Let's go ahead and stand up together. Before you have a seat, I know it's the second Sunday of the year, but turn to like two or three people and wish them a happy new year. Welcome, welcome. It's me. It's Ryan. I don't have a beard. It's been like, it's like the first time in like three years. It's Baby really weird. Face. I'm very um, self-conscious about it. So um, you yeah. look great. Enjoy. Thanks, man. Thank you, Brent. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, cool. Welcome, everyone. Welcome uh, to the new year. As everyone's sticking to their resolutions. All yeah. right. That's great. That, I think your stat was right, Les. It was at five percent. They're the only. Yeah. So it's sounding like we're we're pretty much there already. That's great. All right, sorry, Hugh, I'm moving. 
Um, all right, so the connection cards are behind the seat back pocket there. Uh, if you are a new attender, do we have any new attenders here? Anybody new? Yeah? There's some in the back. Awesome. I've got a gift for you here. Um, there is a little caveat, though. You have to actually meet Rob and Brent, which <laughs> sorry. if you're up for it. So yeah. sorry. They will be back in the connection room uh, for the five-minute meetup after, so you can bring your connection card um, there and turn it in. There also is a little um, space for prayer requests there, so you can put a prayer request, and there is. Um, you can put those in the box in the back. So, um, yeah, come get your gift. I'm going to set this down because I don't like holding a bunch of things. Yeah, so we did the angel tree over the Christmas holiday. A um, couple stats about that. We had gifts for 45 children, and we blessed 26 families, which is amazing. So great, great job. And we have an awesome note here that I'm going to read. And this is from Eric at Reset Ministries. Um, Rob, wow, what a huge blessing for our residents, alumni, and children. The gifts you have brought showed the love of Jesus to our folks. It brought tears of gratitude to many. Thanks so much, Eric. So awesome. Again, round of applause for everyone here. Reset Ministries. It's great. All right, we have a new life group. Um, we're going to be studying the book of Ruth, which is great. Um, second and fourth Wednesday, Wednesdays, it's going to start on January 25th. you got the information up here. You can scan that QR code or go to nextchapter.church by Sunday the 22nd. So if you want to be a part of that. Um, Sunday the 22nd, a couple weeks to think about it, pray about it. Um, it's going to be, again, starts on January 25th at 6.30s here at the church. So, Next Gen also returns tonight down in the basement. Um, it's a life group and Bible study for kids um, from 6th grade to 12th. Um, I believe you said there's, there's going to be an invitations in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So if, uh, if you know of someone or you have someone in that age bracket, we're trying to make it super easy. There are little invite cards at the info center. You can snag one has a little QR code. So man, these, these young millennials, Gen Z, they just little QR code, scan it with your phone, gives them info on next gen. So tonight's the first night. Awesome. So grab one of those, and that starts tonight down down in the basement there. Is it called the basement? Undercroft? We call it lower level. Lower level? I, was, I, have, uh, I don't know. Again, don't my know. Catholic is coming out of me, the Undercroft. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we have the power of a dollar. Um, I don't think Dan Shiner is here, but um, you know we do the power of a dollar um, every now and then. How, how often do we do once that? Once a month. Once a month. Yeah. Thank you, Brent. So once a month. This month, um, Dan Shiner had a friend. Um, who uh, had a house fire, and so Dan was um, nominated that, and that is where the money is going to be going this month. So I am going to lead us into our offering, and we're going to continue to worship. Um, again, you can give by online, the app, um, text, TNCC to 833-287-4463. Um, all kinds of ways to give, and uh, ushers will be walking around here in a moment. So I'm going to lead us in prayer into offering. Uh, dear Lord, uh, we just come to you uh, today for new beginnings as we begin a new year. We know that all things new come from you. You are the master creator and all new life comes from you. So we're going to quiet our hearts. We're going to open up our ears and see what kind of new things you have for us. Allow us to hear it. Allow us to see it. In your name we pray. Amen. Just as you are, until the 
taste it, it's not hard to see. Satisfied, there's sunny on the rock. Oh, there's sunny on the rock. There's sunny on the rock. Oh, there's sunny on the rock. See it again, freedom. Freedom. say that you've got a little bit of the uh, the post-Christmas blues. A little bit, some of you? Yeah. I was talking to a buddy uh, this past week. He's like, I'm leaving my tree up as long as I can because in some way it pulls my heart towards gratitude and joy. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of that this morning. Uh, and uh, there's a psalm. The psalms really speak to me. I don't know if they speak to you as well, but there's this psalm. Uh, Psalm 118. I'm going to totally rip this off from my audio devotional this morning because it was so good, right? It says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I'll be glad in it. This is the day. Today's the day the Lord's made. I'll rejoice and I'll be glad in it. It's so easy because you're like, okay, December 25th, that's the day the Lord's made. I'll rejoice and be glad in that, right? Maybe New Year's Day. Hey, it feels like a day I can rejoice and be glad in. But it's those 
those mundane sort of days, those days where it feels like the grind or feels like you're looking at 2023 with either some trepidation and fear and excitement all mixed together in this really unpalatable thing. Uh, Man, it can be challenging. And as I look at Psalm 118, I'm reminded of this. The writer of the Psalms in that moment, when he's penning those words that say, this is the day the Lord has made, I'll rejoice. He was in the middle of some intense crud. He was surrounded by enemies. There were people on every side wanting to kind of take his life. And uh, it was a moment of fear and trepidation. And I don't know about you, I find that encouraging because each and every day is this opportunity, aside from our circumstance, to experience the goodness and the presence of God, the goodness and the presence. And there's enough manna, there's enough honey for one day, and he can't sustain us. We're going to sing this little part again just because... I need it. I don't know if you guys need it, but let's sing this part again and just recognize even in in those pockets where it feels like tumultuous and challenging, those post-Christmas blues that God has the manna and the honey you need for right now. I keep looking, I keep finding, you keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep praying. You keep moving. I keep praising. You keep proving. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep looking. Father, we thank you so much for this morning, a time in your presence celebrating the goodness of Jesus. We can place our our hope and our faith and our trust in the current activity of your Holy Spirit that can refresh us and rejuvenate us for this new new year. And we do uh, recognize that you have new honey, new manna, new provision, new opportunities for hope, even in the middle of uh, uncertainty and a bit of excitement and trepidation all at the same time. We do trust in you, and it brings our heart joy to trust in you. And for those of us who have not done that or are growing in that way, help us to take that next step, just that next little nudge towards your goodness this morning. We pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. All right, amen. You guys can have a seat. Amen. Good to see you all this morning. Man, you sounded great as always. Thank you all for uh, just all the work you do and being our early practicing. Yes, it was a uh, yeah, great, great worship time. Whoa, there's been a lot going on this week, uh, and I don't even know half of it. I just know a little bit of it. And um, I do want us, 
at the end of the message time, hopefully I won't speak too long, because I want us to have uh, a um, focused time of worship, or of prayer together. I want us just to kind of pray with one another. I want us to pray here at the stage. I want us to pray with prayer ministers. I want us just to pray this morning. That's the topic of my message is the power of prayer. And um, I know there's a lot going on. I uh, just want to recognize, I know Chris Ransom's mom. There she is, Chris. Would you mind raising your hand real quick, Chris? This is Chris and Randy Ransom. Chris just lost her mom this week. And it's been a busy week and a grieving week. So we pray for the Ransoms. Uh, Mike Voorhees lost his brother this week, which is Pat Voorhees' son as well. And we want to pray for Mike and Pat. Um, I did a funeral last yesterday. Uh, some of you may know a lady named Janice Etherton. She worked at Highlands and Special Education Department. Um, she passed away, just fell on New Year's Day, hit her head, and she's dead now. And uh, has four kids. And it's just, it's just been, it seems like there's been a lot of death this week. And uh, I just want us to kind of led me to some of my thoughts on prayer, speaking on prayer. Uh, but there's so much to, to be thinking about. So glad to see Fred and Linda. Fred got a new hip, and he's here today. And uh, glad to see you, buddy. Yes. And Linda had some biopsies done. That's all clear and good. And so we're thankful for that. And uh, gosh, there's, sorry, every time I go to speak, I'm sorry, every prayer request and need is just as important. If I don't say it, it's just because I'm getting old and don't remember everything. So please have grace on me. Uh, I feel like I'm in a little can here, Lex. I don't know if y'all hear that. Can y'all hear that? You can't hear it? Well, it might be my ears. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Well, uh, we're going to get into I, There was one phrase that while we were singing uh, the freedom song, which I love that song said, come out of the darkness just as you are into the fullness of God's love. And sometimes when we're singing phrases hit me, that phrase hit me. For myself and for us. My prayers this morning that if you find yourself in darkness, some of us have some dirty little secrets. I pray that you will come out of the darkness just as you are before a God who is all loving, who loves you and wants to free you. So if that's you, just pray to God this morning. He loves you and wants, wants the best for you. Let's pray together. I'm going to jump right into it because there's a lot to cover and I'm excited about covering it. And uh, Just been praying that we have a powerful time together. So let's pray. God, we thank you that you are all that we need that you are our full soul provider. And yet I and we look to other things so much to satisfy us. And yet we recognize you are the only, you are the only power, the only relationship that can satisfy us. God, we pray for so much that's going on this week for all of the, the loss of loved ones and friends, um, for just things that are going on in our world. Um, we just ask that your power would be a very tangible uh, presence today. We know that you're here. We, we confess that we need you and your power is the only thing that changes things. So please be with us during this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's been interesting too with uh, probably most people have heard, but if you're not a sports person, you probably don't know, but uh, Damar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills, who had a cardiac arrest last Monday in Monday Night Football against the Bengals, seems to be doing better. And it's interesting that there's just been a lot of prayers going out this week. And uh, I just, I think that's a cool, that's a cool thing. I don't know if he'll ever play football again, but I'm certainly thankful that he seems to be doing okay right now. And it's the power of intercession of praying for other people. That's what I want to talk about this morning. I don't know about you. We all have different backgrounds. I grew up and uh, uh, I knew prayer was important. Prayer was powerful, but it never was explained to me like this. It was more explained as, hey, pray. You're supposed to pray. You're supposed to pray. So you ought to pray. It's a discipline, which it is a spiritual discipline. And we, it is an important, powerful piece. But it was more of like, hey, when you pray, it changes you. It'll change it. And I... I agree with that, 
But I'm also learning that it also changes things. It changes even the way that God might act on, on God's behalf. That makes it much more significant to me. Because I think sometimes we think, well, we know that God is a powerful God, that God has all power, and we know that God is good, so he will always be acting with all power and goodness. Um, so why do we need to pray? And that's a good question. If that's the view, which I don't think that's the biblical view, but if that's your view, yeah, there's really not much need to pray, is there? But I don't think that's the biblical view of, of why we pray. I think all through Scripture, it seems very uh, obvious that God has set it up in such a way in creating human beings that he wants us to work alongside him, and he needs us to partner with him to release some kingdom power. Now, that makes a big difference to pray. But I wasn't really taught a lot of that growing up. So I'm going to look at some things real quick about it. And so I think there's a lot that hangs in the balance on whether or not God's people pray. And that's why I want to close with prayer today, because it makes a huge difference. So Paul writes in Colossians chapter 4, we're going to look at a few verses. Uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. He says this to the church uh, there. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us, Paul says. Pray for us, too. Why? So that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. And then in verse 12, it says this, Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends his greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. Why would Paul and Epaphras pray that? Because it matters. It, it was important for them to pray. So it does, seem, it does seem that how the gospel is shared and spread to some degree depends on if God's people are praying. Whether the message is clear to some degree depends on if God's people are praying. Whether the sermon is good or not depends on if y'all are praying. So you all better get ready. It's not my fault. <laughs> if it's not good, you're not praying. That's what that means. And so I'm just kidding, of course. But uh, it, it, it a lot of times can be my fault. But his whole point is like it matters when we're praying. Whether our ministries um, thrive and reach people for the gospel depends on the church praying. And the reverse is true. When God's people aren't praying, things aren't being done. It negatively affects the kingdom. And so prayer is so important. And Paul is showing us with him and all that are with him, like, hey, we're praying diligently for you. Pray for us that the gospel will expand. Pray for us that it will be clear in our message. We pray for you that you would be firm and you would be mature and you would stand firm in Christ because it matters and it counts. And so we know that Epaphras is praying, he's wrestling in prayer, Paul says. Paul says, devote yourself in prayer. Make it a discipline. Carve out space. Pray for us to open the doors of the gospel. And um, I think the biblical view of prayer is this. Just a little bit of theology. I think when we look at who God is, God is an all-powerful. God is an all-good, holy, righteous God. But God is also a relational God. We find this in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God is a relational God, three persons, but yet all God. God has been in relationships since the creation, since the beginning of, of God. And God always shares his power. God shares his power with the Father, with the, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit. And then he creates angels who have free wills. Then he creates humans who have free wills. And the reason that he does that is because he wants to have a real love relationship with humans and angels. But you can't have a relationship with a being that you completely control. So, I got a little, uh, little guy here with me. You see this? this is, <laughs> he, just, he stays in my pocket. <laughs> this is, that, that didn't sound good. His name is Joe. Uh, this is Joe. I got it from downstairs. Uh, a little object lesson. 
Here's what, here's what some, if we, if we take the tyrannical view of God as a tyrant, God has all power. Th- this is, it's not, this is not the way God works. Joe, I made you. I want you to worship me, Joe. Okay, Rob. I mean, master. That's right. I'm your master, Joe. That sounds real good. Joe, I want you to love me and worship me. I want you to give. When you see a homeless person, I want you to give your money. Okay, Rob. I will, master. Good, Joe. Uh, Actually, Rob, I'm a rebel. I'm not doing it. And I'll say, damn you, Joe. Get down here. And so this is sometimes how we think God is. This guy's like, all right, you do. But how do you have a relationship with Joe? You can't have a relationship with Joe. God says, I love humans and all the things I've created, but I love them. So I share in my power with them. I've given you the power of free will. Now, here's what's interesting. We think, well, God should, God's holy and good. He should always intervene. But if God intervenes after he's given us free will, we don't have free will. If God says, I love you, I share my power with you humans, now go and do it. And as soon as I do something bad, God says, oh, no, don't do that, though. That's not free will. So part of who God is, is out of his loving relationship. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. (laughs) And so part of it is just having a love that says, I share my power with you. Now, the risky part is humans can do the opposite of God's will. And so for centuries and centuries and centuries, we've been doing our own thing. That has made an impact on the world around us. It has made an impact on the will of God being done on earth as is in heaven. And so prayer is just God sharing his love, power with us. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, he says this, If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? And then he says, uh, in the next verse, 6, 1 says, as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. We are co-workers with God. What does that mean? We are partners that work alongside God. See, God originally designed it that we would carry out his will to the world. He gives us the free will, gives us power, and the way that we access it is through prayer. And he wants us to come alongside and to pray and release the kingdom power on this earth as it is in heaven. And so it exercises kingdom authority. Our say-so with God's say-so, and we, we unite our say-so with God's say-so, and it makes a difference. But God puts himself, now, now listen to me, this might, some might bristle on this. God puts himself in the position of need. God didn't have to do it this way, but he wants a love relationship. And so we have a choice whether we're going to partner with God or not. So to some degree, God needs us to cooperate with him so that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, no, God's God, right? He doesn't need it. But look at the Christmas story. He comes as a little baby in need. You know to love someone is to put yourself in a position of need. I I love Jennifer, but I need Jennifer. I don't like that part of the relationship. I don't want to have to need her, but I need her. To be in love, to be in any love relationship with your family, with your friends, it means to put yourself in a position of need. And so God needs us to align ourselves with him in prayer for things to get done. Uh, An Old Testament verse, Judges chapter 5, verse 23, says this. Curse Miraz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its people bitterly because they did not come to help the Lord. What do you mean help the Lord? To help the Lord against the mighty. The Lord needs their help and they refuse and God was angry. And he was just saying, I need someone who's going to come and stand with me in prayer. Prayer does change things. It does change us because it changes things. And it gives our lives significance. It's almost as if this, I've heard this example. It's almost like there's a reservoir of kingdom influence that God wants to set aside, almost like a trust fund. But you know, in a trust fund, you need the bank and the recipient to sign before that trust can be released. And it's almost like God has set this power aside, but he needs us to come alongside and to unite with him so that this power can be released in the world. A lot does hang on prayer. 
And every time I come back to the topic of prayer and preach on it, it's so convicting because I don't always believe that. Um, the decision to pray or not to pray, there's a lot that hangs on about us just like our human decisions. There's a lot that hang on the decisions of our human decisions. If I leave here uh, and go out and I get drunk this afternoon and go drive tonight while I'm drunk and I, and I hit a kid and I kill a kid, that was on my decision. My decision to go get drunk, drive, I hit somebody. Now I can make a decision not to do that and not hit somebody. But it all depends on my decision. There's a lot that weighs on our decisions. If I'm going down the road, I hear, I see a house on fire and I hear a baby crying, a lot will rest on my decision. Do I go in and save the baby at my risk of, risk of my life or do I just keep walking and the baby dies? There's a lot that hangs on your human decisions. So why would it only make sense? Why would it not only make sense that there's a lot that hangs on the spiritual stuff of the world? It hangs on us. And so... I'm being convicted, Rob. You, when you pray, it makes a difference. Here's the best, the best piece of this message. Every time we pray, it is powerful and effective. Well, Rob, I don't, I don't, it doesn't turn out the way I'm praying. I don't care. It is always powerful and effective. It is never wasted. Prayers are never wasted. I'm going to skip the next verse, uh, Deb. But... Um, it's just, I know it might sound weird to some, but I think God has set up the world in such a way that our prayers influence God. You look through the scriptures and it does seem like there's a lot of if-then situations of God uh, and, and whether Moses or Aaron, people standing in the gap, God was going to destroy a people and they stand in the gap and history's rewritten. I think there's a lot that hangs in the balance and things in prayer. And here's what I want us to just really focus on um, everything in the kingdom is positively influenced by the power of prayer, which means it's negatively influenced by the lack of prayer. So here's what I want to encourage us as we start this year. If next chapter is your home church, would you please be praying for every ministry of this place? See, my... my <laughs> I'm just naive enough to believe that God wants to use this group of next chapter to change the country, change the world. I don't know how, but I know it's going to be through prayer. And so we need you praying for the children right now downstairs. We need you praying for the children's ministry. We need you praying for the youth ministry, for Angie. And as we continue to search for a youth pastor, we need you to pray for that. We need you to pray for the staff. We need you to pray for all the ministry volunteers. Pray for every aspect of next chapter that we would continue to push the kingdom of God forward and push back the darkness. It, we need God's power to do that. So pray. There's a lot that's leveraged and, and, and decided based on prayer. There's a couple of things I want to say about prayer and then then we'll pray. Uh, the first one is there's two things. One is there is no magic. There's no magic to prayer and there's no formula to prayer. Now these are really important because I see a lot of people get damaged by this. There is nothing magical about prayer. Let me just look at that one first. I have seen and I've heard people, um, they'll pray for someone Let's say, I know I'm kind of have a lot of morbid examples this morning. Let's say a child has leukemia and you pray for this child to, to be healed from leukemia and it does not come to pass. You know what a lot of people will say? Must have been God's will. No, don't say that. That's not God's will. But we say, well, God's, God could have stopped. There's so many other dynamics involved than just the spiritual powers. There's so many other things going on. And so I hear people say, well, it must have been God's will that he died. No, it's not God's will. Others will say this because we think if we pray, it should happen the way we pray. And when it a lot of times does not, we don't know what to think about that because we put on our requests. It's like a vending machine. I put in my B3. It should have got Doritos. I didn't get Doritos. Uh, and so another thing I've heard is when a child dies of leukemia or whatever, and if you pray and it wasn't answered the way that you prayed, then people will say, well, you must not have had enough faith. Both of those are so gross of answers, it makes me want to puke. Honestly, it does, because it damages people. 
It damages people. Prayer is not magic. There are no formulas to it. God's will, God's will is a strong variable that affects what comes to pass, but there's many other variables. There's human will. There's angelic will. There's decisions that have been made over our ancestors of the 10th century. What they decided and what they did, it all has effect. More, it has an effect, not just God's will. And so we have an entire book in the Bible called Job that explains to us why these two extreme answers are refuted. There's way more that goes on than just what we think. And so all decisions that we make, God has to honor that free will. I can't imagine being God. I mean, just with my kids. You know, when they make decisions, like, what in the world were you thinking? Like, that breaks my heart. But I don't not love them. That was a double negative. I, I, I still love them. But God has to honor every decision because he says, hey, I'm, I'm giving you power to make a decision. Behind everything, the whole history of influences leading up to it, prayer doesn't magically cancel all of that. we got to understand that. It doesn't automatically change everything because the world is incredibly complex and we don't know. Here's where we got to get really good at, at responding. When people say, well, was it God's will or, or was it just the lack of faith? May we just start saying, I, I don't know. I don't know. I am not powerful enough to know how all of these dynamics have influenced the world that we live in. And when you pray and, and it's not answered the way that you pray, May we just say, I don't know, but I'm not going to stop praying. That's what I'm not going to do. What I do know is this. This is powerful. What I do know is this. God is always on the side of good, never evil. God is always on the side of health and not sickness. I've heard it said this. This is a good way. Whatever is true in the kingdom of God, may we pray that way. There is no sickness in the kingdom of God, so may we pray for no sickness. There is no death in the kingdom of God, so may we pray that people would be raised from the dead. Whatever is true in the kingdom. Now, it's not magic, and it's not a formula, so if it doesn't happen the way we pray, then don't stop doing it. It's still powerful, and it's still effective. But when prayers are answered the way you pray, wow, how powerful that is. We don't know much about how the world, we don't know how good and evil is dispensed, but we do know God is always on the side of good, and our prayers do make a difference. I love this verse, James, the brother of Jesus, chapter 5, verse 16 says this, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful. And it's effective. Don't you ever think it's a waste of time. Don't you ever think, I'm speaking to myself because this is what I think sometimes. Don't you ever think because they didn't get out of the wheelchair, God did not hear that prayer. It was still powerful and it was still effective. We just don't know what God's doing. Maybe the kid wasn't healed of leukemia this time, but maybe on the 10th time he will be. Or maybe he never will be. But that prayer is still powerful and effective, and it still moves the kingdom of God. It still advances the kingdom of God. And then the second thing is this, the nature of faith is this. This is another one that I want to encourage us to be careful with. Um, I have seen this damage a lot of people, including myself. There's a very common assumption in American Christianity that your faith is as strong as you are certain. So if you are certain that God is going to heal this child, we think that the more certain we are that it's going to happen. But you know what happens? When it doesn't happen, where does that leave the individual? Oh, they're devastated. I've, I've mentioned this before. I'll never forget this. And, and when I was growing up in LaGrange, Kentucky, at our church, our pastor, uh, his name was Bill. Such a sad situation. Um, his son was diagnosed with uh, cancer. Now, let me say this. Unless God gives you a true word of revelation or knowledge that they're going to be healed, that's okay. <laughs> but if you don't get that, 
we sometimes think, I'm, I'm certain this is going to happen. Um, Pastor Bill uh, was certain God was going to heal his son from cancer. Certain. Claimed it, confessed it, declared it, decreed it, was certain. The church was praying around him, and his son died of cancer. He did not get healed of cancer the way we were praying it. I never saw my Pastor Bill the same after that. I don't know why all, maybe things changed, but I know this. The nature of faith is not because you think it's going to happen stronger, it's going to happen. That's not the nature of faith. The nature of faith is, God, I know when I'm praying, it's going to continue to advance the kingdom, and it's powerful, and it's effective, and I don't know what the outcome's going to be, but I know this makes a difference. The other way that we do it is kind of a modern psychological view of faith. But the whole way of faith in the Bible is we obediently press in a direction even when we don't know what the outcome is going to be. We're still obedient and we're pressing, knowing that our prayers are powerful and effective. Praying with faith is not about knowing how it's going to turn out, but it's pushing in a certain direction I do think it's important. I use my imagination a lot too. Um, maybe we're praying. I've prayed for so many people that I never saw visibly healed the way we were praying. And it does mess with my faith until I come back to moments. I'm like, Rob, it's not about how the outcome comes. But, um, but maybe praying for someone in a wheelchair. I know Jenny Lightfoot, she comes and we pray over her a lot. Art prays with her a lot. It does, it, the point is not whether she gets up out of the wheelchair. The point is God is on the God. God is on the side of good and health and all that stuff. And so we pray and we know that this prayer and we can envision her getting out of the wheelchair and being free. But if it doesn't work out that way, we still pray in faith and it's effective and powerful. And you never know, someday she may walk out of her wheelchair. Here's what I do know, and we'll, we'll, we'll have some prayer time. God always looks like the crucified son on the cross, Jesus. God always looks like Jesus. Where you see wholeness, where you see beauty, where you see goodness, where you see justice, there you will see God breaking through. So may we always pray for those things because that's what, who God is. And God wants us to come alongside and say, yes, that's God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Here's the other thing I want us to do. Maybe this is more for me and it might be trust in the power of prayer. As Americans, like I said, we like to see results. And when the result doesn't happen the way we pray, we feel like it's a waste of time. But I've come to tell myself this morning to remind myself and remind you, it's never a waste of time, but it's always powerful and it's always effective. And so when you pray, devote yourself to prayer. If you're a part of this church, this is your church home, devote yourself to praying for the staff and these ministry leaders in this church, covering everything, everyone in prayer. I've heard it said this way, prayer is the gasoline that the engine of the kingdom runs on. Prayer is the gasoline. It's the engine. Don't get caught up on the outcome because all we know is prayer is powerful and effective. And God is always good. God is always on the side of the just. God is always righteous. God is always holy. May we pray to that degree, knowing that there's some good going on. I just don't know all the spiritual realm of what's going on. But God needs us as co-workers to come alongside and pray. Does that make sense? Are we getting that this morning? Yeah. I don't know. No more. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So here's what I want us to do. I want us to pray this morning. Um, don't worry so much about the outcome. Yes, God, God hears our prayers. God answers prayers. Um, but if we get focused on the outcome, it messes us up sometimes. Pray in faith, God, I'm going to pray, knowing that this prayer is going to change direction in the kingdom. I may never see it. You know what's interesting? In Hebrews chapter 11, that's often called the hall of faith. And there's all these people, these great faith, people of faith in God. Do you realize most of those who are listed did not get to see what they were praying for, yet they are listed as people of faith. 
So here's what I want us to do. For some of us, like, that's weird, Rob. It won't be that weird. If I build it up really weird, you might think, oh, that's not bad. Uh, but I want us to just, I want us, for whatever you have on your mind to pray for, there's always something to pray for. It could be anyone, anything. You can pray where you stand here in a second. You can pray with someone. Maybe God's leading you to pray with someone. Maybe uh, you need to come here and pray with a prayer minister. Pray. We're going to just open this, this stage up for like a, just an altar of prayer. If you want to come and pray, um, I just want us to pray. We can sing too. Uh, you don't have to always say it out loud. There's no special language you have to use. There's no special tone you have to use. There's no special words you have to use. Um, it's just praying to Abba Father. Like you would talk to your dad, like you would talk to a parent. Um, just to be selfish this morning, uh, my daughter Taylor is here. <laughs> and this is her last Sunday. She's moving to Austin, Texas, never to see her dad again. <laughs> She's going to get married. She's going to find somebody to get married and never come home. I don't know. I hope that's not true. But <laughs> if it is, it is. But um, if you will, pray for her this week. She's, uh, well, we are going to be traveling to Austin, Texas to move. And uh, that's always a big transition. So pray for her. Here's the thing, too. I love was we've prayed for Damar Hamlin, the, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, there's no guarantee of how things would have turned out, but we know that people are coming together and praying, and it's powerful. Um, but I like what Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, like, you can throw us in here, and our God will save us. But even if he doesn't save us, we will not bow down. He is still our God. So um, pray for Taylor, not just that things go well and it's an easy transition. But that God would use her in strong ways in Austin. That's why we pray. It's not just for me to feel better. It's not just for Fred to have a new hip so he feels better. It's God, would you heal Fred's hip so that he can be healthy and he can continue to go and spread your love to the people that he's around. That's why we want Fred to be healed. So, Pray for Taylor, if you would, uh, in your week today, what I'm going to do. But let's, uh, let's, let me open it in prayer. Then we're going to stand, and you feel free. There's a freedom to pray, to do whatever you want to do while we sing. If you just want to stand there and sing, great. If you just want to sit there, that's great. But even if you're singing or standing, may you just be in a time of prayer, knowing that any, every prayer is powerful and effective. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you um, that you have created us. And out of your great love for us, you have given us free will, and you've given us the opportunity to, um, to work with you through the Holy Spirit and to see your will done on this earth. God, forgive us as a nation and as a world where we have not been watchmen on the wall. We've not been praying for our country. And so I pray that we would today begin to pray for our country, pray for our world, knowing that it always pushes the kingdom of heaven a little further and pushes the darkness back. God, may you help us with faith. Help us not to have to know all the reasons why, but to trust you. And Father, may we just run to you and may we just feel the embrace of your arms and sit in your lap and would you empower us to do your will on earth as it is in heaven? Now, we just ask that there would be a spirit of freedom in this place this morning, that um, we would pray. Pray for one another. Pray for those who have lost loved ones. Pray for those who have kids that are estranged. Pray for any relationship that we need, God. And as we do, we recognize that these prayers are powerful and effective. And so have your way, Father. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you, church. Let's stand together and uh, let's just pray and sing whatever you feel led to do.
things. One is um, uh, Michelle Swall. Where'd she go? She was just there. Michelle Swall's back there. She said, Rob, I've been having pain in my leg and Irene just prayed for me. And she goes, honestly, that pain has gone by like 80%. She goes, I just want to tell you that. And uh, yeah, those are great. Those are great. When we see you can clap to that. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and I love that. Um, and another thing too, Rachel Eaton had mentioned to me, she says, Rob, I feel like I got a word of knowledge and that is on trauma. And before we leave, I just want to pray that God would break and release any trauma 
Um, we all have trauma. I don't know if you realize that, but we, to be human is to be traumatized, but we all have trauma, uh, but some of it uh, influences and affects us more than others. So I want to pray just for trauma. You know, and sometimes with this stuff, you see so many weird examples on TV and TV evangelists and wheelchairs and crutches. You're like, I don't think they're healed. They're just going back rolling in their wheelchair. And you see all, and I'm like, let's not worry about that. Let's just pray and just let God be God and let's work alongside of God. And uh, so I want to pray for that. And then after I pray, feel free to dismiss yourself, but also the band will play for a few more minutes. Feel free to still stay and pray too, okay? Uh, so just know whatever you need to do. Let's pray. God, I pray right now um, for the word that you've given Rachel uh, of trauma that is putting some of us in bondage. For anyone here that resonates with that, I pray that you would break, break them free of bondage, Father. We know that you are about wholeness and freedom. And in the kingdom, there will be no bondage like this. So we pray now that you would break the bondage that's holding some of us back. We ask in the most powerful name that you've given us, that's in the name of your son, Jesus, that you would do these things, Father. Continue to heal all of us and bring wholeness to all of us, for that's what you desire. And we know we're going we're gonna to see that come to more fruition because of our prayers, of because of each prayer is powerful and effective. Help us to continue to follow you and just be faithful and have faith even when it looks like nothing's happening. May we just keep stepping and pushing darkness back. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Feel free to stay and pray if you want to. And who day? That's what I got to say. You saw my condition Had a plan from the start Your son for redemption The price for my I don't have a contest Mercy is, is called.